the Gillette Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. Cleveland Arena in Cleveland, Ohio, Gillette presents Carmen Basilio of Canastota, New York, and Johnny Saxton of New York, New York, in a 15-round middle uh, welterweight championship match promoted by the International Boxing Club, James Dean Norris, president. And good evening, fans. This is Win Elliott with Don Dunphy welcoming you to Radio Ringside for the Gillette Safety Razor Company. As a simple thank you to the men and women who buy Gillette products, we broadcast the major boxing event of the week every Friday night and stellar attractions throughout the year, such as the All-Star Baseball Game, the World Series, the Blue and Gray Football Game, and the Rose Bowl Game. The boxers are already on the scene. They're no strangers to one another. Basilio and Saxton, this is their third meeting. So far, the score is one title apiece. In Chicago last spring, Saxton used his left jab and reversible props to land the title. And five months later in Syracuse, with his pride and title at stake, Johnny tried to slug it with Carmen, and like the historic cherry tree, Johnny got chopped down. Basilio knows only one way to fight, wade in and punch with both hands, especially the left hook to the body. So what kind of a watching fight this is going to be tonight depends upon Saxton's choice of styles. Saxton thinks a reversion to his Chicago hit-and-run tactics can do it for him again. Basilio, on the other hand, not only thinks he really won the Chicago fight, but he's counting on the effects of their last fight to be in his favor tonight. The fans here in Cleveland's arena, better than 10,000 of them, excited by their first title fight in more than 10 years, have picked Basilio 3-1. to one. Two things in this fight are even Stephen. They both weigh the prescribed 147 pounds, though Saxton had to work off three ounces at the weigh-in this afternoon. And each of them is going to take 30% of the gate, something in the neighborhood of $30,000 apiece. Eight-ounce gloves are being worn tonight. Six ounces are normal in championship fights, but as a result of an unfortunate death of Jimmy Doyle in his championship fight with Ray Robinson ten years ago, eight-ounce mitts have been the Ohio law every, ever since. As the hitter, the added padding would seem a disadvantage Ladies for Basilio, but we can't be sure. Let's go up to Tommy Dwyer now in the center of the ring. James D. Norris, president, co-promoter Larry Atkins, 50. Fifteen rounds for the welterweight title. The ring officials assigned here by the Cleveland Boxing Commission, Dave Ott, chairman. The doctors are M.H. Lambright, Jr. and J.R. Smith. The judges, Herb Williams and Charlie Bill. The referee... Tony LaBranch. Fifteen rounds for the welterweight title from Canastota, New York, wearing the white trunks, weighing 147, the champion, Carmen Basilio. From New York City, wearing the black trunks, weighing 147, the ex-champion and challenger, Johnny Saxton. <laughs> Referee, Tony LaBranch, 15 rounds, another contest to follow the referee's instructions. And now we'll go up to the center of the ring and hear Tony instruct the fighters. There's no need of me going into detail. Are there any questions about those instructions you received this afternoon? None? Right, all I want you boys to know is that the, the uh, knockdown is waived. The eight count is not mandatory. 
All I want you fellows to do is keep fighting until I tell you to break and break clean. Good luck to both of you. It's the world's welterweight championship, Carmen Basilio and Johnny Saxton. The route, 15 rounds. If you're going to score the fight, it's the five-point must system. Give the winner of each round five and the loser from four on down. Don Dunphy is ready to give you the blow-by-blow. Each boy in his corner bouncing up and down, a little nervous, as we all are here in Cleveland Arena, awaiting for the bell. Here it is, Don. Thank you, Win Elliott. Good evening, everyone. Saxton seems just a little taller. They're both the same weight, 147. Saxton takes a whipping left hook to the head after scoring with two jabs on Basilio's chin. Basilio, using his familiar bob and weave tactics, slugs away with both hands to the head. They're blocked, and Saxton grabs them, and they go into the first clinch of the fight. Referee Tony LeBrand circles him. Saxton feints the left hand, sticks out a leg jab in the chin. Basilio digs the body with the left hand, brings up a hook to the head, but that's blocked easily by Saxton, a real will of the west. Saxon jab goes to the head. He blaps the left hook in midair. Takes the light jab. Then a grazing right hand to the chin by Basilio, whoever is aggressive. Saxon feints the left hand. Takes the left hook to his midsection. A left chop on the jaw by Basilio. On the inside, they tie each other up easily, and the referee gets them out of it. Now they're at long range. Saxon misses a haymaking right over Basilio's head. Then he puts a left hook to the head of Basilio and backs away before further damage. Saxon feints the left hand. Basilio drives the right hand to the body when he misses with a left. Saxon up on his toes is jabbed lightly with a left hand by Basilio, who fights in that bobbing, weaving style, something like Rocky Marciano. Basilio takes a hard left hook to the chin and staggers Saxon with a left hook to the chin. Saxon was staggered by a hard left hook. He takes another left hook to the chin, a right to the head, and then tries to hold on as they're on the far side of the ring with the referee over, uh, getting them apart with a little bit more than a minute and a half to go. Saxon's in trouble. Basilio pounds the body and takes the right to the chin. Basilio puts the left hook to the head. Saxon gets away from a long left, takes two right hands to the jaw by Basilio, who's real murder right now. A right to the head by Basilio, he drives both hands to the body. Saxon gamely tries to hold on. Basilio over anxious, misses the left hook that might have ended it. Basilio puts the left and a right to the jaw. Saxon goes in and holds on and then gets out of it. Takes the right hand to the body, a left hand to the body by Basilio. And Basilio puts everything in every punch. Again, the referee comes over to get them apart. Saxton is very dazed and on the ropes. Takes the left hook to the head, and Basilio goes in close and pushes him away. Saxton moves into the ropes, takes a right to the jaw. A left and a right to the chin, a straight right to the jaw. Saxton fights back with a hard left and a right to the jaw of Basilio. Saxton misses the left hand. Saxton must hope that Basilio might punch himself out here. Basilio's right goes to the head. He starts the right hand, puts the jab on the chin, puts the right hand to the head, gets away from the left hook by Saxton. Basilio works on the body with both hands, brings up a right up a cut to the jaw, pounds a left and a right to the chin. Saxton is almost helpless on the rope as he goes in and holds on with 30 seconds to go in the round. Saxton on the rope, takes a jab, a right and a left to the head by Basilio. Basilio pounds the body with the right hand. Saxton comes back with the left hand on the head. He takes a withering left hand of the body thrown by Basilio. Saxton is close to being knocked out. Basilio puts a jab on the chin, drives a hard left to the body. A right up a cut staggers Saxton. The round is almost over, though. Saxton misses a right over the head as he tries to fight back. Only about 10 seconds to go in the round. Basilio drives the left to the body. Saxton scores with a left hook to the head. Saxton takes a right to the heart, a left hook to the midsection by Basilio. And the referee gets him apart at the bell. Listen to that crowd. They're alive tonight. Cleveland is a great sports town anyway. How about fellas like Johnny Kilbane and Trish Speaker and Otto Graham and Bobby Feller in early win? There's a savvy pitcher and a Gillette fan from way back. He says there's only one way to get a decent shave, and when he says that, he means with a Gillette blade and a Gillette razor. There's a Gillette Super Speed Razor that matches your skin and beard exactly, but like regular or heavy. Choose yours, and Gillette positively guarantees shaves that are wonderfully refreshing, shaves that make you look and feel your best. The light is for lighter beards, the regular for average skin and beard, and the heavy for men with dense, hard-to-shave beards. One piece for speed and convenience. You change blades and clean the razor presto. One dollar gets you the Gillette Super Speed Razor, the dispenser of Gillette Blue Blades, and the Snark Traveling Case. Believe me, I think Saxton fought the last two minutes of that round on sheer nerve and instinct. He's on his feet. Round two. Round two it is when Basilio gets out there calmly, sticks a jab to the chin, takes the left hand of the head, works both hands of the body, drives both hands of the body, hooks the left hand of the head of Saxton. Saxton is chopped away with the right hand of the head as he tries to hold on with his left hand. 
Saxton takes a jab to the chin, gets away from a sweeping left out of his body. Saxton comes in with a right hand to the chin. Basilio brings up two right chops to the jaw, pounds the body with a right hand, chops another left hand to the head. Basilio moves in with a jab, takes one by Saxton on the head. Basilio starts the left, puts the right to the chin, a left hook to the head. He's got Saxton in a neutral corner and bangs into the body with a left hand. Another left hook to the head. Saxton comes back with a left hook to the jaw as he brings in all his ring cunning, trying to stay in there, and he's hurt again. He takes that right to the body and a right over the head. Basilio is not head hunting. He goes to the body when Saxton covers up. Saxton drops his guard, then backs away. Thanks the left hand. Basilio grazes the chin with the left, drives the right hand to the chin, puts another right uppercut to the jaw, left hook to the head, drives the right hand to the body. Once Saxton covers up on the ropes, they move out in the center of the ring. Basilio comes after his man again, thanks the left hand, thanks it again. Two minutes to go in this round. Basilio drives both hands to the body, puts the right hand to the head. Saxton has to hold on again. Basilio works the body with the left hand, puts the right to the chin, a right to the body, under the heart, a left and a right to the jaw by Basilio. Saxton drives a straight right hand to the chin after scoring with a left hook on the mouth. The referee gets them apart. Now they're at long range again. Basilio comes in, runs into a straight right, digs the left hand of the body, raises the jaw with the left, puts the jab on the chin, pounds the right on the head, hooks the left and a right to the jaw, a left hook to the body, and Saxon is driven back to the rope. Saxon takes a straight right to the chin and almost knocks him down. A left and a right to the body by Basilio, a straight right to the head by Basilio. Saxon fights back gamely, throwing punches at the head. He takes a right to the chin, a left hook to the head, a right up a cut to the jaw by Basilio. A left hook on the chin by Basilio. Saxon takes a grazing left and takes both hands to the body, a right to the chin. Basilio throws a fusillade of punches at him. Saxon takes a left hand to the head. Basilio has Saxon cornered over in Carmen's corner. Basilio throws, takes a left hook to the jaw, drives a right up a cut to the heart, a left and a right to the chin. Remember, though, Basilio could punch himself out. That's happened. He puts a right uppercut to the jaw. Saxton comes back with two left hands on the head. Takes a grazing right to the head, a right hand to the body. A left hook to the head, another left hook to the jaw by Basilio. A right and a left to the jaw by Basilio. Saxton takes a left hand to the body. He's taking awful punishment in there. He takes a right and staggers. A left hook to the jaw by Basilio. A jab on the mouth by Basilio. Basilio's right goes high on the head. He digs his left hand to the body, and he's not missing. Another left hook, and there goes Saxton down on his back. Saxton on his back. Four. He's trying to get up. Five. He rolls over. It's six, seven, eight, nine. And it's all over. Robin Basilio by a knockout. Robin Basilio by a knockout. Here's one Elliot. On, and it was a tremendous left hook. A short one that didn't go more than five or six inches inside after he had belabored Saxon with everything in the book. And you wondered what kept Johnny on his feet. Basilio came in with that left hook. It was flush on the jaw. Johnny went right down on the canvas on his back. A beaten fighter, but a man who put up a game battle as game as you'll see for almost six minutes of solid fighting. The opening punch, the punch that sent him on his way to Dream Street in the first round, I think was a left hand to the heart. But Don Dunphy, who is up in the center of the ring, will get both the winner and loser on first. And so we'll probably hear right from uh, Carmen's own lips as to what the punch was that started him on its way. I thought it was a left hook to the heart, but you never can tell. It's a little, okay, are we ready with Don? All right, up into the ring and Don Dunphy. And now this is Don Dunphy up in the ring. We're going to try to bring Carmen over here. Come on over, look at the camera, Carmen. There's the announcement. Carmen Basilio, still champion. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Carmen Basilio, who fought one of his most sensational fights in keeping the welterweight championship of the world by a second-round knockout, a clean one, over Johnny Saxon. Tom, and we're on NBC television and radio tonight, and we want to congratulate Thank you. Thank you, Don. Of course, uh, Johnny didn't hurt you at all, did no, he? No, he hit me a couple yeah. of good shots when I got careless, but he takes a very good punch. I was he, surprised. He took an awful lot of Oh, boy. <laughs> would you say he took better punishment than anybody you ever fought? I would say that he took continuous punishment, one, you know, punch after punch, and still stood up under fire. Uh, Tom, and I think there was one punch in the first round... That turned it your way. Will you tell us about it? That was a left hook coming out of the clinch. Coming out he of the clinch. He backed away and gave me just enough leverage to hit him right on the chin and it took all the fight out of him. From then on there, he just didn't know what he was doing. Well, Tom, we want to congratulate. We've got two questions. I know your managers are here. Yeah. One of them is, uh, Tom, and, Tom and Mike, you give up the welterweight title and go in the middleweight rank. Well, let's wait and see what happens. We don't know. 
I think I'd like it uh, if there's a chance for the title. That's all I'm interested in. Give it away, Clash. It's a title shot. All right. Nothing else. And one more, Carmen. One more. Yes. I hear there's a lot of pressure on your by your family to ask you to retire. Is that so? Well, when I can look like this, there's no one going to ask me to retire, Don. Thank you very much, Carmen Basilio, and good luck to you. And now back to ringside. Okay, Don. Well, we find out that as long as Carmen thinks he can take anybody in the world in two rounds, that he's not looking forward to retiring. He won it in the second round. A clean knockout, a clean left, nasty shot to the chin of Johnny Saxton, and Johnny was counted out. This was no TKO. This was a clean knockout, and a happy Carmen Basilio who knelt in the center of the ring and thanked his God is now, well, just about as happy as anybody can be as the photographer snap his picture from every point of vantage. Not a good-looking boy, but a heart of gold, but a savage in that ring. Remember, fans, every Friday night is fight night on the Gillette Cavalcade of Sports. And next week, boy, do we have another dandy. Before we go into that, here's a thought and a good one. Do you have a dollar handy? Well, that's all that stands between you and the most comfortable shaves you've ever had. Yes, sir. One buck is all it costs for the Gillette Super Speed Razor that matches your face exactly. There's the light, regular, and heavy. The light Gillette Super Speed has moderate blade edge exposure and edge angle for men with lighter beards. The regular is for men with average skin and beard. And the heavy is especially designed for men with heavy, dense, hard-to-shave beards. The Gillette Super Speed Razor it is one piece for instant blade changing and cleaning. Get the Gillette Super Speed Razor of your choice at a nearby store. One dollar with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser and convenient travel case. A Carmen Basilio who at 29, despite 68 real brawls, because the kind of fighter he is who takes a punch to give one, you would suspect he'd be older in a chronological sense than he is in the 29 calendar years, tells us, told Don Dunphy in the ring tonight that he's not thinking of retiring, not when it only takes him two rounds. And I see he's over there kissing his sister. You know, Carmen comes from a large family uh, up there in Canastota, New York. There's some seven or, seven or eight in his family, and they're all crowded around over his corner. And now Carmen is just hugging and kissing. That's his wife in a powder blue for you ladies. Uh, she is just as happy, the blonde, blushing, as they're taking her pictures, too. You can see these in the, in the uh, newspapers tomorrow. Carmen, who hardly had time to work up perspiration, well, that isn't really true. He was flinging his fists with the, with the rapidity of a threshing machine in there, but it only took him some five minutes to knock Johnny Saxton into ten seconds of oblivion, and this was the cleanest knockout I've ever seen scored by Carmen. This was no TKO variety. This was bang. Well, John, you had five seconds of real tonsil activity, and then the stretch into the ring. I know you got your breath back. What did you think? Well, I've never seen anything like it. I didn't see the Dempsey Purple fight uh, win. I was a little too young to go to fights in those days, but I saw movies of it. But this was it all over again, except that only one fellow was taking all the punishment. And I think it was merciful that Johnny Saxton finally went down. He's a good game kid. No matter what you can say about Johnny's tactics in the ring, sometimes he runs and sometimes he slugs. He's game. And uh, I, I don't, however, think Basilio ever had an easier knockout victory anywhere. And right now he's at the peak of his class, a very good class, incidentally. And uh, uh, a one like this is a real bone to boxing, no question about it. It was a sensational fight. There was no contest after 30 seconds of the first round had gone by. As uh, Carmen told you, Don, that the, the position of Saxton, the leverage, was just right. The punch that he hit him looked to me as though it landed on his heart, but Carmen said it was right on the chin, didn't he? It was. Uh, that's what he said. And when I want to say this. Here's a man uh, who's getting better as he gets older, this Basilio. He's probably about 28 now, which is not old by ordinary standards, but he's poor luck. But he did not get over-anxious when he had the Saxon in trouble the first time. Many a fighter has punched himself out by going to the head, but he shifted to the body every time Saxon covered up him. Believe me, those body punches just about sealed it. I, I can't, uh, we can't enthuse too much, I know, about Carmen's excellence in here tonight. I, don't, I know coming into tonight's fight, I was questioning Carmen's, uh, naturally, he's always in wonderful shape, but you know the tough battles he's been in, and I wondered whether he was going to start to slow down. Well, he gave that answer, and the right hand, Don, he, he used it right from the very beginning. That's right. Uh, the right hand, uh, which was bruised, caused a postponement of this fight from January 18th until now, but... He was hitting with it and hitting hard. Incidentally, Carmen, outside of the ring, is one of the most likable uh, persons you've ever met. 
But something like Jack Dempsey, you can't talk to him on the day of a fight. He, he's all concentration. He was real edgy this afternoon yes, at the way he was. He, he didn't even know his friends, but believe me, he knows them now. And uh, a real tribute to a good sport. He's a wonderful guy. He's a combination of characters. As you said, outside the ring, there couldn't be a sweeter guy alive. But when he gets inside that ring, he is just as savage and as pitiless you remember the Alec Bronick fight? Remember you talked to him after the fight, Don? You remember what he told you? I've been Syracuse. He murdered that poor fellow. Yes. You remember he said, well, I've been murdered myself in this ring. That's right. And I'd, I'd like to quote something that he said that he is purported to have said. One of the Syracuse uh, writers asked him, how can you be such a gracious and charming individual outside the ring and such a relentless fighter in the ring? And he is purported to have said, well, the ring's 24 foot square. In it is a referee, my opponent, and me. And that doesn't leave much room for pity. That's well put, Wayne. <laughs> well put. Well, this was a great fight tonight. Everybody here in the arena enjoyed it, some 10,000 in all. I suspect this is the largest crowd that has ever seen a fight here in uh, Cleveland Arena. Remember, fans, every Friday night is fight night 